Welcome to Victory Quilts, a story of the 1940s told through quilts. I'm Eleanor Burns. Today you will learn how to make Mr. Roosevelt's necktie with triangle piece squares that lock together perfectly. The second block is Fala, Roosevelt's constant companion, just an adorable Scotty dog made with applique. That's just like you, Kirby. Well, by 1940, Franklin Delano Roosevelt had already been President of the United States for eight years. His little dog, Fala, joined him in 1940 as well, a constant companion. He ate his meals in Roosevelt's study and slept in a chair at the foot of his bed. Now, would you like that kind of life, Kirby? See, can you do tricks like Fala did? See, Fala could roll over and sit up and beg. You could get a treat, yeah. FDR was a president of the people. He often endeared himself with chats along whistle stops. The Secret Service called Fala the informer. They tried to keep the president's railway trips a secret, but two things gave away his presence. Well, the first was the construction of the ramps Roosevelt's wheelchair required. The second thing was Fala. You know, he often traveled with him, and Fala, like any other dog, would insist upon being taken for a walk when the train came to a stop, of course. Well, a sign of a closed train standing at a siding, heavily guarded by military, as a Secret Service agent walked a little Scotty dog was a dead giveaway to any American of the 1940s. You know, Fallow was as much a celebrity as FDR, and he actually received fan mail. Well, this is our charming Fallow quilt. The center blocks are 12 inches square. They're set on point, and you can embellish Fallow with some beads, some button eyes, just so cute, and I love the quilting of the Scotty dog. The outside border is six inch blocks that look like dog bones, but you know they're actually Mr. Roosevelt's necktie. The two blocks combined just make such a cute quilt. It's just perfect for all dog lovers. Roosevelt was an optimist, offering hope to millions of Americans who were without hope after living through World War I and the Great Depression of the 30s. So let's be optimistic too and get our quilt blocks done. I once read, you should never trust a man who wears a bow tie. Well, FDR wore a bow tie often. You know, his adversaries called him a warmy old chestnut. You know, but most Americans loved him, and I think you will also love his block, Mr. Roosevelt's necktie. This is what it looks like right here with the three different patriotic colors with red, white, and blue. And then here are the cutting charts for the 12-inch finished block and the six inch finish block. Well, when you look at the block straight on, it's hard to see a necktie or a bow tie, but then when you turn it on point, it looks better. You have to use your imagination on this one. Each of the patches before you sew them together are three and a half inches. Well, that's the 12 and a half inch one. This is the really cute six and a half inch, finishes at six. And all of these patches start out as two inch squares before they're sewn together. Well, let's take a look. Here's the setup. You have three pairs of the patriotic colors. You have a red and a blue, medium and a dark. Flip those right sides together, a background and a red right sides together, and then a background and a navy right sides together. These are all four inch squares. So take your ruler, whoops, a little static here. Drop your ruler from corner to corner on the top one. Always put the lightest one on the top, and you can just go right down along there and draw a diagonal line. Pins are handy. If you have a pin, go ahead, stick a pin on each side of those triangles. Now we're going to use a quarter of an inch seam. Oh my gosh, I never do anything different. It's always that quarter of an inch seam. But on my foot, I have this bar that when I drop my presser foot down, 
it lands on the line and it is a quarter of an inch away with the stitching. So just zip right down along there. You could assembly line sew, but I actually have two sets already sewn. So just turn around and sew on the second side again. And then just cut your threads. Let me show you. I already have the other two sets stitched. So the distance between here and here should be a half inch. Here's the red and here's the navy. Okay, the next step is just to go ahead and cut them in half on the line. Grab your ruler again and just cut them in half. Well, all of my patches are a little oversized. That's the way I like it because I like to make these perfect now. They are perfect three and a half inches. So use your six and a half inch triangle square up ruler and just place the three and a half inch diagonal line on the stitches. Okay, there it is, diagonal line on the stitches, little extra sticking out on two sides. So just go ahead, trim off the two sides and before you're done, just angle your cutter and cut off those tips. Well, let's get them off. And this is just extra. You can just go ahead and get rid of them. And let me finish this second one right here of the medium and the dark. Three and a half inch line right on the stitching. Trim the excess on the two sides. If you line it up perfectly, you won't even have to trim one side. So now comes the pressing. And I'm just going to take this one. You know, I actually already have those all squared up. I'm on the ball. When I sew my blocks together, I like everything to lock. And to make it lock, right now, you have to press this one with the uh, medium on the top and the second one with the navy on the top. So just set the seam open, press one seam towards the uh, medium, the red, set the second one, press this time towards the navy. And then usually you always just drop your patches with the dark piece on the top, open and press. And you can just work as fast as you can right there. Let me turn this one around. And that's it. Got them all pressed and ready to lay out the block. Now the block is pretty simple. It's all just a combination of these patches and squares. Now I'm going to lay out the rows. The first vertical row is made up of all three and a half inch squares. It's two background at three and a half inches and then the red and another three and a half inch square. The second row begins with a background, a three and a half inch background. Now this is our pieced triangle square, background in navy. And the next one is that tricky piece. On this two color one, the seam is pressed towards the navy. So make sure you get that one in there and then we'll finish with a navy three and a half. Okay, navy square up here. This is the second two color patch. This time the seam is pressed towards the red. You know, this really stuck us whenever we first did this. We just could not figure out how to make these seams lock, but when you work at it, you can come up with it. Okay, so then the last row is just a background, a red, and two more background. And that's the whole block. That looks easy. Well, now I like to do vertical rows. I like to sew from the top down to the bottom. And this is exactly what it looks like. I did it ahead of time. I sewed down each one of the rows, flipping them right sides together. And now comes the magic. When you flip them the other way, they're going to lock together. So just flip like this. And when you go down this way, turn it, push the top one up and the underneath down, always lock, top one up, underneath down in the first row. But when you pull over and go to the second row, just do the opposite. Now this time the top is going to go down and the underneath up, down on the top, underneath up, and they lock 
the whole way through. It's just marvelous. You know, Roosevelt had this wonderful speech about the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Well, this block is easy. Have no fear and get your block done. This is the 12 inch follow, Roosevelt's constant companion. And this is the six inch follow. My sister Patty calls this one the puppy. You know that Roosevelt's wife, Eleanor, did not believe the White House was any place to raise a puppy. But oh, that puppy stole the hearts of Americans. The first thing you want to do is make a photocopy of your pattern. And then just go ahead, put glue all over your pattern and place template plastic on top. And then I just love to rub the layers together and cut out the pattern pieces. The best part is all of the pattern pieces have placement lines so you know exactly how to put it together. There are three different pieces for the black. You've got the head right here, this is the foot, and then this is the leg. Now the second piece is the coat. And you know he's Scottish, so why not use a cute plaid, a cute stripe. This is a piece that can be really fun. This one you can just trace out with your black pencil. Well, once you have all of the tracing done, then cut out your pieces. Well, I'm ahead of the game because I already have them laid out. Now using the pattern pieces, this is how you place each one together the coat, the head right on the top. The foot's gonna fit right in there. This is kind of the tricky one because this is the tail up here and this is the foot down here. The first thing you want to do is take the coat and flip it right sides together to the head. And they actually just line up just a little bit hanging out right on the top edge. And just so along with that quarter of an inch seam, let me get this lined up and stitch right down along there. And you just stitch clear to the very end. Doesn't matter, it's pretty amazing how it all goes together. And then so you don't get confused, be like me. Just lay it back out one more time so that you've got it right. And this time press the seam for the head behind the coat. The foot is next. You're just gonna flip it right sides together. Right here, it's lined up perfectly, so you can just stitch right along there. It's also a quarter of an inch seam, so just drop your foot and stitch along there. You know that everybody in the White House helped prepare food for Fala, but Roosevelt fed the food to his dog by hand. Can you imagine? Okay, now this time, take the little foot fold it down and crease it so that the seam is behind the foot. Okay, this little leg is next. Remember, you've got the tail out here, the foot down here, so just flip it right sides together. And this is the trickiest part. Let's just line it up like this in the beginning because we just have to sew a couple of stitches to anchor it. So put your foot down on it, put your needle down and stitch and actually put your needle down in the fabric so that you can take hold of both pieces, kind of stretch them out in a line. And as you stretch, just give a little pull with a stitching and keep on twisting right around there. I'm nearly down to the bottom. And just sew off the end again and cut your threads. Perfect. Now this piece, the seam gets pressed behind the coat. So that's all that you have to do with the dog. That part is easy. And the rest is applique. It's just a wonderful technique. Now, take it, press it from the wrong side, and place it right sides together to a piece of non-woven fusible interfacing. This is the bumpy fusible side, and this is the right side of the dog. Now, when you stitch around the outside edge, there's two places you have to be careful of. Right here, as you're coming around the nose and into the neck, you want to go right up so you still have a quarter of an inch from both units. That's right your quarter inch point. You're going to just stitch down around there. The same thing right here at the foot and right here where you go from the coat into the leg. Again, make sure it's a quarter of an inch so it's perfect. Now, all you have to do is just trim one-eighth inch away. I'm just going to take my scissors and trim away 
on the fabric and on the interfacing. This is just so much fun. You know, whenever you do that little quilt, the little puppy dog quilt, this is the size of the dog. You're going to make eight of these. And then that bone is only the six inch uh, Mr. Roosevelt's necktie block. All right, let's just keep on trimming right around here. The stitches that I used were a small stitch. It was um, 20 stitches to the inch because it's really easy to um, tear the um, interfacing. You want to make a nice tight stitch. Okay, right here, you're going to take a clip in so it turns nicely. Keep on trimming around the outside. This is actually the same technique that we use for all of our interfacing patches. You know, when Roosevelt gave his Four Freedom speech, it was wonderful. Everybody was in the uh, office. Everybody was very, very quiet. He gave his speech about the Four Freedoms. He said everybody is entitled to the freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. And it was such a powerful speech that not a word was heard in the office. The only thing that everybody heard was Thala quietly snoring away in the background. Well, I have dogs. We know what that's like. Okay, I'm up to the point. Got my interfacing trim. Just get rid of this. Perfect. Now from the interfacing side, just take and cut a hole right in the interfacing only. And next you need your favorite applique tools. You need to have a straw, a bodkin, a point turner, and a wooden iron. You get that straw right here and just stick it right, how about let's just go right up to his ear. That'll be good. And turn the ear so that the fabric is on the straw. Take the ballpoint on the bodkin and just start pushing it into the straw and you just keep on working, pull the straw away and you've got it partly turned. So now you're just gonna keep on pushing the applique pieces into the straw and work at all of the body parts. So once you have everything turned, then just take your bodkin, run it around on the inside edge kind of poke out all of those pieces. Oh, I think we better give Fowl a little bit of a nose and a little mouth right here. But just poke carefully so that you don't poke any holes in your interfacing. And then you want to take your stiletto and take the point of the stiletto and pick out the top of the ear just so it looks sharp. Get everything pushed out perfectly, make it nice and flat. Let me finish this and then I'll show you how to finish them. Fala now has a perky nose and a perky tail. Everything's turned right side out and you can see the inner facing on the back side. There's the hole, I pulled it right through. Well, you can set it on straight like this or if you prefer, you can just go ahead and turn it on point. I'm gonna just use some of the lines on my pressing mat to get it all lined up. Okay, you really need to have some water in your iron so you can come straight down on it with steam. Just give it a good shot of steam. Once you're certain it's in position on the front, turn it over and just press again from the wrong side. That way you really have your dog secure. It's looking good. So cute. Well, I like to sew mine down by machine. You can sew it down by hand if you want, but I am going to sew mine by machine. I have the straight stitch on right now, so I want to select a blind hem stitch. Let's see, on this one, it's Q14. I like it. I like a width at 3.5 and a length at 3.5. So I'm just pressing buttons here. One more thing, I'm gonna press my presser foot my lock stitch and my scissors and I'm ready to fly. I love this machine. It has the neatest feature to it. I have my F foot on. It is a metal foot and it has a clear plastic opening so I can see the stitches from the inside. I'm just going to line it up and start right here in the middle of his hind leg. Let's see. Now 
when you take stitches, you want the straight stitch to go back and forth on the background and take a bite right into the fabric. And, and just keep it lined up. You have to figure out how to place it. Now, if you have a little bit of interfacing show and you don't really want to show it, you just curl it under with your stiletto before you come to it and then just hold it down. Okay, I am coming into a little corner on the foot. Going slow. Don't want it to mess up. So the wonderful thing about this machine is that each time you stop, the presser foot automatic raises and the needle is down. Okay, now I'm just gonna turn it one little turn put my foot down, the foot goes down, and I'm just going to take a bite and stop with the needle on the outside edge again. That's how you really want to stop. You want to always pivot with your needle in the fabric on the outside edge, and then you can do anything. Well, I got such a great point right in the edge, but let me show you again. I'm coming right into this part on the foot. When you get right up to it, slow down, take a bite in and stop with the needle in the background. Pivot, and then when you start going again, when you put your foot down on the presser foot, the foot on the machine goes down and you just keep on going. I could sit and stitch like this all day, let me tell you. Well, I'm just gonna keep on sewing right around the outside edge of this. And when I'm just about ready to get back to where I started, I'll show you how you end it off. I'm coming back into where I started now. And so I'm just gonna get right up to where I need to overlap just a couple of more stitches right there. All right, this is the best part. I'm back to where I started and with one button. Now, all I have to do is hold down my lock stitch. The machine locks it in place, cuts the thread, and raises the foot. Now, how easy is that? And that's the way it looks. It looks great. This is right where I started and right where I ended. So you can see that nice long stitch going right around the corners. It is perfect. Well, you can finish with a collar. Probably buttons would work great. You could just sew buttons in a row. You could put a little trim, some ribbon beads around the neck for the collar and maybe a button eye. You know, when the president passed on April 12th on 1945, Fala was the hardest one hit. Fala had a really hard time getting over the passing of his master. But we can give Fala a smile on his face again, just with a little bit of stitching. This one is just a little six inch dog. We gave him a nose. How about a little tongue and some whiskers? Now these are all done by machine with the triple stitch. So put a smile on your face and have a great time. The Scotty Dog pattern has been endearing to American women and children for years. Well, these blocks were discovered recently by Elizabeth Pay, and she set them together into this cute nine block quilt. Well, the dogs are just darling. They have child safe, hand embroidered eyes, a nose, and some whiskers. Well, Elizabeth framed each block with one and a half inch strips of solid fabrics. And you know, each color is a perfect reproduction from the 1930s. In the solid squares, which are set on point, Elizabeth machine quilted a Scotty dog. Oh, it's just so cute. Well, as soon as Elizabeth finished the quilt, she proudly showed it off to her husband. At one glance, he quickly retorted, bad dog. Elizabeth had inadvertently turned one dog wrong. You know, sometimes you're just so close to your work, you don't even notice. So this has become the bad dog quilt. Well, Elizabeth even made a label for this quilt, giving this dog his very own dog tag. Look at this, very personal. It says, Bad Dog Elizabeth Pay 2006. Very, very cute. Well, this pattern is from Alice Brooks. Now, Alice Brooks was a fictitious name for a designer sold by Old Chelsea Station Needlecraft Service. You know, they were a mail order company that began in 1933 in New York. 
Now, the blocks are set on point with a total of seven background pieces. Oh, you can't even imagine that. This block was made from that pattern, and you can see all of the piecing in the background around here. Pretty amazing. Well, people just love Scotty Dogs because this hand towel was embroidered with Scotty Dogs playing together. You know, my mother also loved Scotty Dogs. In 1946, she bought my sister Patty a little rocker painted with Scotty Dogs. Such a long-lasting craze, continued by Roosevelt. So much fun. Well, this is the Roosevelt Rose, a quilt named after the president. The background is black tints. Oh, it's a beautiful palette to just show off the hand applique flowers stitched to a large oval vine. All oh, those yo-yos are cute. They're unique with a small yellow piece of fabric inserted inside each circle and the quilting. Just look at the quilting. Wonderful straight lines and in the outside edge you can see a beautiful scallop edge. Feathers running through and then the red binding just finishes it off. You know, it was designed by Ruth Finley. Well, her pattern appeared in the January 1934 issue of Good Housekeeping Magazine. Can you imagine that? Here it is, right on page 54. Across the top it says, The Roosevelt Rose, a new historical quilt pattern by Ruth Finley. Well, Roosevelt's wife, Eleanor, garnered the admiration of a generation of women. And she is still a role model today. Posted on my office bulletin board is a quote from her. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. And today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. Enjoy your quilting.